In this video, we are going to configure Google Analytics 4's Add to Cart event using Google Tag Manager and WooCommerce Store. This video is part of a bigger playlist where we are seeing how we can configure Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics for your WooCommerce Store. All you need to do is watch the first video on the playlist where we have configured Google Tag Manager container on the WooCommerce store and we have also added the plugin that we need. This video has been divided into four different sections. In the first section of the video, we are going to see why Add to Cart is important and how you can utilize the Add to Cart event once it has been configured on your website. In the second section of the video, we will see how to configure the data layer and how this event is triggered on the website. In the third section of the video, we will create tags and trigger in Google Tag Manager that will help us track this event with e-commerce in information back to the Google Analytics platform. And in the last section of the video, we will do some tests, publish the container and look at the report. If you want to export the container that we have built in this video, you can just go down to the description box and click on the video link where you can find this. By the way, my name is Hassan and I have configured Google Analytics on more than 1000 websites and helped more than 250 clients and work with 25 different agencies. So why exactly do you need Add to Cart event on your Google Analytics platform? Add to Cart event action fires on your website whenever a user adds any product to your cart. This Add to Cart action actually tells you that how many users are actually interested in your product. We can build different reports in Google Looker Studio and Google Analytics. One of the reports I have opened in front of me, we can see that how many items has been viewed and out of these items, how many have been actually added to the cart and finally purchased. So in this section of the video, we are going to see how this part is configured. So this report can actually be utilized. We can also look at the same report under monetization and purchase generally. This add to cart column, which says step three, this is populated when we will configure this event in the video. So now we have seen that how we can use this add to cart event in our Google Analytics and Looker Studio reports. Now we need to see how we can actually trigger it on your website. So I have opened my WooCommerce store right here. And if you go to any of the product pages on your website, your store obviously might look different. Once you have select any of the variation and the user is going to click on this add to cart button, this add to cart clicking button action is going to trigger the add to cart action for the Google Analytics. Now we just need to see how we can configure this event action in Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. For that, let's just go back to the Google Tag Manager container that you have configured on your website and we can see that we have view item and page view configuration from the previous two videos of the playlist. So let's just hit preview so that our Google Tag Manager debug window can be connected with our website. This debug window is like a temporary pipeline which will help us see all the data layer events that will be triggered during this debug session. So I have added the URL of my website and once I hit connect, this will connect my debug window with the website. Let's just open both of these pages side by side so we can actually see what actions are happening on the website. So let me just go to the shop page and click on any of the products so we can actually go directly to the product page. So on this product page, I'm going to select an option and then going to click on add to cart. So you see, as soon as I will click on add to cart event, the debug window is showing me a data layer push event. And this data layer push event has some information such as currency, value and details about the items. So now we have successfully created the data layer, which we actually did in the first video of the playlist. If you haven't watched that, you can go directly here. And now it's time to create the tags and trigger in Google Tag Manager. So let's open these two windows side by side again. And let me move this debug window right here. So under Google Tag Manager container, I'm going to create a new tag. And since I don't want this tag to fire on all the pages of the website, I only want this tag to fire on the add to cart event. So I'm going to create a new trigger for this one. To create a new trigger, just click on the plus icon on the top right corner and under the tag configuration, we are going to select custom events. I want the name of this custom event to be exactly the same as the one I'm looking at in the debug window. So let's just copy this one and paste it right here. Let's rename it to custom event add to cart and hit save. Now we have created the trigger that we need for the event. Now let's just create a tag that will fire this information back to the Google Analytics. For that, let's just select a GA4 event tag. Now you see that it requires some information. The first thing is measurement ID. You can copy and paste the measurement ID from your Google Analytics account. You can go directly to the Google Analytics account and in the search field, you can search for measurement ID. And if your spellings are correct, the measurement ID should show up and you can copy the ID, go back to the Google Tag Manager container and paste the ID right here. Or you can create the, a variable that we did in the first video and paste it right here. The event name we want to send is add to cart. You have to be careful with the naming convention of the events. Everything has to be small and spaces should be replaced by underscore. This is called snake case lettering style. So once we have done that, we also need to send information about the items. So there are two ways to do that. 
the first option that we used to do previously is to add each information separately. So we can add value and then we can create a data layer variable for value. However, in this video, we are going to look at the simpler option, which is using more settings variable and send e-commerce value. Once we have e-commerce data and data layer selected, this will automatically look into the data layer component and select the value that we need. So let's just rename this tag to GA4 EEC add to cart. And let's hit save. Doing all of these four things should essentially configure the tag. However, it's always better to test and see if everything is working all right. So let's just hit preview window again and open both of these windows side by side so we can see the event as soon as it triggers on the website. Let's just go back to the shop page and open any of the product sections. Let's just open this one. And on this product, as soon as I will click on add to cart, technically speaking, here it should be one add to cart event. So let's just click on that and I can see that one add to cart event has fired. This has also triggered the e-commerce event for this and I can see that it has some information. Now there are three ways to now there are two ways to verify this information, whether it is working all right or not. The first one is directly inside the debug window. So on the top, you can see we have two different containers. Containers are basically anything that is related to Google tags. So we have one Google tag for Google Tag Manager and then Google Tag Manager is finding another Google tag that is GA4. So if you go to this one and you will see this add to cart event, it has sent one hint back to the GA4 property. So if you will open this one, you can see all of the information that has been sent back to the GA4 account. And in this, we can see that there has been sent an e-commerce items, there has been value, and there is the currency parameter sent back. So we can ensure that this information is working all right. There is also another way where we can verify this information. Since this session has been working with the debug view, we can see that the debug view has been enabled as one. So as long as this debug parameter is one, we should be able to see all of this information inside the debug. View. So let's just go directly to the debug view. Now let's just go to the debug window to verify if the event is working all right. So on this debug window, we can see that the add to cart event that we triggered on the website should be coming in here. And this is the add to cart event. We can see that it has all of the item information such as item ID, quantity, name and price. And it also has the other variables such as value and currency. You might notice that the, in the items, the price is really high, but this is just because uh, Google Analytics turns the value parameter into the six decimals values for some reason, just to be more precise. So that's why we are seeing all of this big number instead of 59.99. And now we just need to make sure that our Google Tag Manager container is not in the draft mode and the changes has already been published. So let's just publish the changes. GA4 add to cart. We have successfully configured page view, view item, add to cart event. However, this begin checkout event is still not working on our website. So in the next video, we are going to see how we can actually configure this begin checkout event. And to watch the full tutorial, you can click here.